Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Dave and Nikki's latest podcast session. Um, I'm happy to welcome uh, Lila Key today, um, the General Manager and Chief Product Officer from Global Sign. Um, so welcome, Lila. Oh, thank you, Nikki. So happy to join you. Yeah, we're, we're really happy to have you. And um, you know, I came across um, your, your guys' company and, and, and you um, by kind of a circuitous non-traditional way in that uh, I was writing an article on security. Um, TBR, um, the firm that I work for, is publishing a series of COVID-related posts, uh, as is that's the only thing we seem to be talking about <laughs> globally to these days. And um, one of your salespeople happened to like one of my past posts, and I was writing a special report on the topic of security. And uh, I kind of found my way way to you, and by learning more about your firm and, and what you guys do, um, you know, I was compelled to, um, you know, ask some questions around what exactly is Global Sign doing, um, how do you guys view the um, pandemic, what has changed, things of that nature. And um, you know, with that, I'll let you introduce yourself real quick, and then we can kind of leap into some of the uh, areas that Dave and I were hoping to cover. Okay, sounds great. And again, I appreciate the opportunity to join the podcast. Um, so my background um, for the last 25 years um, has been in cybersecurity. I started off um, at a larger company called GTE, where um, technology called public key infrastructure was used for military applications. But now I'm going to date myself. Um, we, we moved quickly into the dot-com um, age, where it became clear that there were so many opportunities to do um, commerce over the Internet. Um, but not necessarily securely. So that same technology was used um, in a more commercial um, um, application uh, to basically identify um, endpoints and at the time mostly servers. So if you were purchasing something on a website and you were about to put in a credit card and you wanted to make sure that that session was um, uh, safe, uh, we call it encrypted, and you wanted to make sure that that um, online store really was L.L. Bean, not, not someone masquerading as L.L. Bean, um, you could feel confident in that transaction. So I've been with um, certificate authorities that use the technology called public key infrastructure to issue electronic credentials, what we call digital certificates, to provide those online identities um, that folks can rely on and trust. So that being, I mean, that's a great rundown, and I, I think um, it's a massive understatement to say that such techniques and, and solutions are not just important, but absolutely critical, um, you know, not just to, I mean, personal health is obviously first and foremost, but health of our, of our networks, of our data and privacy, and, you know, there have been, um, you know, instances flashed across the news of where, in case we, we haven't done that, and that you know, there, there has been kind of some severe negative effects. Um, with with your company being a leader and, and being a leader yourself in the field of security, you know, in a, especially at a time when you know, the world is more vulnerable than ever, um, what are you seeing and learning by being at the front lines that maybe someone who's working from home may not be seeing? And what are some of the most pressing challenges and ways in which you guys are, are helping people stay safe and secure? Yeah, so I, I totally agree. And, and I, you know, um, the electronic commerce needs securing, um, not just for protecting companies, but protecting people, citizens. And remember, it's data that's being um, um, transmitted. And that data, as you suggest, could be healthcare data, um, could be um, anything that's personal in nature. And of course, it could be IP for companies. So it's really, really important that that data is protected. And I, I think it becomes even more relevant now that many of us or practically all of us are working remotely because those protections that we either take for granted or it's just transparent to us, um, being inside the secure perimeter of your company's network, uh, not necessarily there. So um, there's a whole new level of um, protections that need to be in place in and also just um, new level of attacks that people are, are tapping into the, the emotions and, and the insecurities that folks have in, in craving for information about COVID-19 and, and, and tempting folks to click on links that may include malicious code that could you know, overtake their system or, or even tunnel into their company network. So um, there's a whole new twist 
to um, cybersecurity um, because of COVID-19. Yeah, definitely. And, 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 and you're right. It's, it's, this, this has obviously changed the way we work with a speed, I guess, that kind of pushed the shame the most aggressive digital transformation efforts, you know, right, by far. And so it it is forcing, I guess, IT and security pros to themselves have to work remotely, you know, but still have to, you know, deploy remote access for, you know, for, for scores of work from home employees now without any compromise, you know, to the uh, security, you know, so I guess, and to what you're saying, how is Global Sign, I guess, advising, you know, customers and, and, and you know, in, in facing this challenge now? Yeah, no, really good points, David. So, um, so there's, there's a couple things. Um, I'm going to start off with the topic that you just brought up, secure web access, right? We're, we're now um, trying to access data that is stored in our company networks and, you um, IT teams are now challenged to, you know, make sure that there's an encrypted tunnel, usually a VPN, mm -hmm. um, and that, again, both sides of that transaction are authenticated. The company needs to know that it's really Lila trying to access the information, and I need to know it's really global sign that I'm trying to pull a file off the hard drive, yeah. uh, I should say the, um, the, the company drive from. So um, one of the things that global sign is um, educating our customers on is the need for what we call two-factor authentication. Um, you know, we're a true believer that passwords are weak in um, themselves. We all know that people tend to use the same password that they use on social media um, for higher stake network access. And having a second factor, and in this case, a digital certificate, mm -hmm. provides um, IT um you know, administrators, a way to feel that there's there's a, a stronger um, way to assure that the um, to both ends of the endpoints, the user and the um, network, are authenticated. Mm -hmm. There's there's also um, a couple other areas that I think are becoming very pertinent, uh, and I would say you know the classic phishing scam. And yes, you know the the the, the um, Employees are getting smarter about, you know, recognizing, you know, the email from um, the prince from Nigeria and not to click on the link. <laughs> but the, but yes. the emails are becoming so much more sophisticated. And to my earlier point, they're they're really tapping into the emotions of COVID nineteen or, mm -hmm. or you know, presenting um, scenarios where it looks very very believable that a message is coming from either the corporate um, IT group or or through a business partner, or, or just some information that just is very tantalizing. So I would also suggest that, um, and this is what we blog extensively about, and, and this is what we're trying to do as part of our education campaign, um, is that, you know, really be careful with those um, emails. Um, ideally, you know, don't trust an email unless it's been digitally signed and you can authenticate that a um, certificate authority has vouched for the identity of the sender. But at the very least, even if it's not digitally signed, you know, take a few seconds and hover over that sender email because it might look like PayPal, it might look like a government site. Um, but if you hover over, you can see that the, the, the domain uh, might have an extra, you know, letter in the PayPal name or it might be something completely different. But, you know, we, we were blogging on just really basic tips that aren't complicated and don't necessarily cost a lot of money or a big investment to implement that can really peel off a huge layer of, in terms of um, cyber vulnerabilities. And then, I, oh, go ahead, please. I'm sorry? I was just going to say um, some of that seems like common sense, but it's all uh, the kind of common expression of hindsight is 2020 and you right. think, yeah. of course. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, and you think of so many of the breaches that have occurred from, you know, even critical infrastructure sectors like energy all the way to banking and, and other, you know, major companies with huge IT teams and cybersecurity professionals. And it, it inevitably starts with somebody clicking on a link in an email and um, either they are tempted to provide information that might be used immediately or at least peel off one layer of the, um, the attack. Um, or, or worse yet, spread malware. So, um, and this is often how we see um, the ransomware getting spread. In, in, and again, it, it, the best of them get get caught. In, in, and it can be so simple as just taking an extra few moments and, mm -hmm. and scrolling over that URL and or that domain and, and making sure you know, um, you know, who you're corresponding with. 
Well, you, you've dashed my hopes that the Prince of Nigeria doesn't really want to become my husband and give me a billion dollars. So I'll have to come up with, <laughs> with another plan. <laughs> yeah, so, I, mean, so I do have another um, use case that I think is really interesting and again, very top to topical. And it's, it's, it's also showing how quickly, to David's point about you know, uh, digitization transformation, like, you know, maybe this is a silver lining to COVID-19. Um, you know, I've been watching the um, the e-notarization um, legislation or attempt at legislation for 10 years now in, you know, the, the simple um, act of a notarial act is still very, um, you know, face-to-face, human-to-human, um, you know, based. And there, some states have modernized more than others, but many states were very, very slow to adopt uh, video-based verification of, um, you know, individuals who want to have a notary perform a notarial act. And um, with COVID-19, you're seeing a rush to legislation that was being bogged down for years and years, and all of a sudden it's getting passed. And um, this is a place where, again, Global Sign is, is um, helping, I believe, because there's one thing to have the notarial act happen over video, but you need to produce evidence of that. And this is where we have um, solutions where we can um, capture that act in a PDF and digitally sign it with a um, trusted timestamp. So you can prove down the road if in the event there's, you know, litigation that, you know, that um, that act that happened online was um, something you can rely on. That's interesting, you know, so it's funny. I've been preaching for years as, as I've covered digital workplace technologies like collaboration, you know, that identity, you know, secure identity is, 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 is a pillar, right? You know, for distributed collaborative work, you know, remote teams and so forth. Are you then seeing, a, you mentioned even from a, a law and policy perspective, are you seeing, I guess, that sort of uh, that merging of the, the law perspective, you know, like changing of laws, policies, and also changing even in enterprise behaviors where even your messaging is being received a lot, you know, a, a lot better now. Yes, definitely, David. And, and the funny thing is, um, it really started even before COVID-19. Um, and it, I would say it started more in Europe. Um, mm. There's, um, there's, there's probably more harmonized laws in Europe around identity. Um, this um, regulation called EIDAS, and this is the regulation where they create three different assurance levels of identity that can be used for maybe digitally signing transactions. Mm -hmm. So um, in the highest assurance, they call qualified certificates, create the highest level of assurance, will um, provide the strongest um, um, legal admission um, in, in the event there is litigation. So many US companies are multinationals or, you know, they, or they're just US companies doing business with European companies. And because this law, for example, if you want to send an electronic invoice, requires you to sign it with these strong digital credentials based on verification of the um, identity. So um, we're seeing it, we saw it kind of driven from Europe, but the, the US is absolutely, um, you know, close you know, following that and adopting that trend. So again, the days of passwords and weak identity are really waning. Um, and again, as more and more high stakes transactions and more, you know, important data is, is traveling over these um, networks, whether they're private networks or the internet, um, the strong identity is, is definitely um, becoming um, recognized um, uh, both by state and federal law. When you think about your the entire breadth of everyone who could benefit from services that Global Sign offers, and whether it's enterprises or individuals, and I mean, when people think of security, they automatically think, oh, well, you need secure health data, you need secure financial data. Are there any other industries that might not come immediately top of mind for someone to think, like, oh, I'm in that industry and I should really focus on my security, or or surprising any surprising trends that you've seen that people need to be really aware of so that might not kind of come to mind to kind of the average person working remotely yeah yeah so i think one of the um well there's there's two areas that come to mind one one is actually pretty obvious but maybe it's not um you know um in your day-to-day -day life but energy sector is a huge sector that our country you know deems as a critical infrastructure and you know if something goes wrong in the grid and, and we can't have power 
um, that is needed for hospitals and in, 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 you know, a whole range of things to keep this economy going, um, you know, that, that could be a disaster. So th this is a sector that has um, embraced cybersecurity at very high levels for, for many, many years. And they even have their own set of regulations that Global Sign is really tied into. So I, I think that's one area that might not be, um, you know, um, household um, application, but but it, it, it's it's um, you know it's it's something that people should take comfort in, knowing that you know you go to bed and you just take certain things for granted. Um, but you know this sector is is taking the cyber cybersecurity quite seriously. Um, but the the one that I think is a little bit more relatable is um, the FDA, uh, the Federal Drug Administration. You know, yes, they're 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 protecting, you know, clinical trials and in in obvious things, but um, many folks don't understand how many things go through the FDA from food coloring to pet food <laughs> to a whole range of things. So um, the FDA does require um, a um, any submission that uh, to their agency to be digitally signed with a particular type of digital uh, signature in a verification of the um, of the user who's associated with that signature. So um, that, that is something that, you know, I, I think is, is very relatable because I, I think more people are touched by it than, than they realize. Yeah, I think that's an interesting relation then between uh, you know, enterprise or corporate culture and then person or personal culture and how the two are converging more now than ever in, that, in ways like you just highlighted that we don't really come top of mind and you think, well, Actually, how do my lights stay on, and or how does the hospital operate? Oh, <laughs> the, oh <laughs> yeah. Those that power the electric grid that power the hospital. There's this whole chain of reactions that I think people are finally starting to see and come to light that you know we we did take for granted when the world we existed in three months ago. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so you know, with that in mind, to kind of at the intersection of um, cor corporate corporations and enterprises as well as individuals. Um, you know, what are some of the things that Global Sign as a company is doing to, um, whether it's give back to your employees or promote collaboration or, or just kind of help in the short term um, your, your customers cope while we kind of adjust to whatever the future holds? Yeah, no, thank you. Um, so let me start off with employees because um, I just, you know, I, 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 I so appreciative of our, our team and they have really rallied during this crisis. And although many of the team did work remotely, many of them didn't. And there was a huge adjustment that happened so fast and, and everybody was such a great sport about it and, and flexible. And and so I'm, I'm super proud of them. Um, so, you know, for, for me as a general manager of the Global Sign Americas operation, it you know, our, our team safety was number one priority in, in before we even get into the customers. Um, it was important that everybody understood, you know, what our plan was, how, you know, their safety was number one priority. Their, um, you know, our revenue, our profit, you know, um, that was secondary. Of course, we're, we're going to look at that and we're looking at mitigating factors to, to protect you know, um, you know, revenue streams and, and costs and, and all of that. But really, that is a, a, a distant second to um, our staff's, you know, health and in not just their physical health, but their mental health. We understand that so many are, you know, working in a workspace where there's small children and pets and and partners, <laughs> you know, competing mm -hmm. for a bandwidth and space and in in um, you know. I'm turning on the microwave at the most ill time. Um, so, so you know, we understand there's a whole other level of stress. So I think one of the most important things that we did as part of our business resumption plan is remind folks that you don't have to do everything. Not everything has to be resumed. Like we should just focus on the critical, um, you know, tasks at hand. And other things can either wait or, you know, we don't have to do them. So, um I think that was really well received and um, that's, you know, we're doing all sorts of ways to keep lift, lift spirits up and, and do virtual online, you know, coffee chats and in online yoga and in and, 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 um, spirit days where we dress up in our funniest, you know, um, hats and, and things like that. So mm -hmm. that's one thing I did want to note. Um, but of course, our customers are, are also extremely important to us and we, and we have great concern that, um, 
they um, feel confident that their service will continue and we're, we're there for them. Um, the nice thing is we are 100% cloud service. So, you know, we have data centers that are running 24 by 7 where we're not stifled by shipment or manufacturing or, 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 or transportation. Mm -hmm. So that that's kind of nice that we're able to keep things going. Um, but we back to what I mentioned earlier, we, we really do feel like education is the thing that we can give back to the not just even our customers, but to the community. So we're we're blogging as much as possible on, again, um, email security and being careful not to get trapped into, um, you know, phishing attacks and ransom attacks and um, how we can help these new, um, again, back to the e-notarization. They're passing these laws, but these these poor notaries, they, they've never used a digital certificate or a USB token, and it's, it's quite confusing. So, you know, we're all hands on deck to kind of facilitate these, you know, oftentimes mom and pop um, customers that, you know, frankly, we're not going to make a lot of money on, but we, we want to help because we want to make sure that um, we can have continuity in vital, um, you know, um, services such as notarial acts. Um, so, yeah, so it, it's really an education campaign. And, and again, just um, trying to make sure that our, our team is feeling that we're, we're, 100% behind them and your families health wise and and um and you know I, I think the other thing too is you know we used to have a kind of ask me anything um face to face meeting once a quarter now we're meeting me like once a month and we're having a, a lot more communications we have webex teams going there's so many places to have an outlet to ask questions um there's a lot of uncertainty. When are we returning back to work? How are we going to return back to work? Um, you know, or, you know, I, I want to return back to work, but I can't because I don't have daycare for my kids. So we're, we're trying to um, address everything real time when we can and, and, and have a real open door um, policy to, to make sure folks don't um, get more distracted or more anxious than they need to. That's awesome. It's amazing. You know, and, we always talk about this, Nikki and I, how much workplace culture is, is just shifting and, and changing, right? But I think it's also good to see the empathy, you know, being displayed, mm -hmm. in, not just by companies, you know, for customers, but by companies for their own employees, you know, where, you know, they're empathizing more and just, just shifting the culture and just showing that you know, they care, right? You know, for, for employees and, and also customers and the wider, broader community as a whole as well. Um, any final thoughts uh, you'd like to share, Lila? Oh, um, yeah, so I, I would just like to end on that note, because I agree with you, David. I mean, there's just been heartwarming story after heartwarming story of either supermarkets or or um, large manufacturing sites that mm -hmm. are, are, you know, making mass or, or, or serving the public and the um, the the giving in the um, selflessness and um, the let's get together as a community first versus individual organizations is, is is quite heartwarming so i just like to say i'm i'm still bullish on human nature and um human kindness and and i think we're gonna pull through this together i think it will never really be the same but i i think there's so many good things that will come out of it that will be um you know worth continuing yeah, Lila, thank you so much for joining us today. I mean, it's really discussions like this that kind of emphasize those points that, you know, it, it's kind of comforting that we're all going through it, even if it's separately physically, but kind of together in spirit. Um, it sounds kind of cheesy to say, but it's <laughs> what it really is. Um, so, you know, really thank you for joining Dave and I today. Um, and also for, you know, all the things that Global Sign is doing to uh, you know, help keep everyone safe and secure. It's um, incredibly important. It was my pleasure, and thank you both. Absolutely. Have a great day. Absolutely. Thank you so sure. much, Layla. Thank you. So